Hey y'all, this is A.L. Thick Madame and Cinnamon and Sugar. Now look, I don't know if y'all can tell because of the sunlight that's right there, but the curls, they actually doing something. And it took me all the 10 minutes to do, which I actually can't believe. Like when I tell y'all, I kept looking, I was like, now if I wanted to achieve a cute look, the curls would have tried me and I would have had to about break my hand trying to achieve a fourth of what this look is. Like, it's given in, in every single... Air. Anyway, despite the gray hairs, it's doing the most. It's doing a lot. Got complimented. People lived for it, all of that. But that's... That's 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 the problem, y'all. Guess what? I got to tell y'all about something that happened. And yes, it does connect to the fact... It, it, it connects with the fact that I'm looking raggedy. Uh... I was looking raggedy and I looked halfway decent today. Guess what? <laughs> I'm having a flashback. Um, I met someone famous. I met someone famous this past weekend. Guess who it was? Now, before I reveal who it is, I must explain this, even though I think I've said it before, but you probably won't know if you're just someone who hasn't watched like every single one of my videos. I have a handful of people who literally watch all of my videos, so they would know for a fact that I've said this before, but I'm the type of person that is not starstruck. I'm not a fangirl. I'm none of that. I can see somebody that, like I can see Beyonce right now and I'm not going to have a heart attack. I'm not going to look like a deer in headlights, like none of that. Like she could be right in my face. Like anybody who you think is like number one, A1 in your book, I can see them right now and it, it just won't, I'm not going to do the most. Well, <laughs> when I saw this person, I don't know why. It's like I fangirled out on the inside. On the inside now. But still, it's that's still foreign to me. So, I'm giving y'all a moment to guess who it was that I met. Now, if you were able to guess who I met, put it down in the comment section. <clears throat> so, this past weekend, I met, drumroll please, Robert... Beresford Brown, best known as Bobby Brown, <laughs> the Bobby Brown. Yes, I met him. <laughs> y'all, okay, so I think I told y'all about this too, but usually when I um, take pictures, I'll do a video and then I'll screen grab photos from the actual video footage, right? Because for me, I'm not photogenic. I feel like I be looking raggedy all day, every day. And I have to try to go through so much just to find a decent looking moment. To be like, okay, I can have this as a picture. So, my friend was there. And I took a picture of her first. First of all, she, she made a mad dash. She made a mad dash. Because somebody was like, I think this is Bobby Brown. This heifer made a mad dash. She was like, because at first I was like, wait a minute, what's wrong? Listen, so the background, as far as that is concerned, is that my friend lives for uh, Bobby Brown. She lives for um, Child White. What is it? New Edition. And she's gone to their concerts. She's gone to a couple of their concerts, but every time she went, it was during a time where Bobby was not in the group. Okay? So, this is her first time actually meeting him. But y'all, I got, y'all gonna think I'm lying, but if I hadn't seen it with my own two eyes, I would have been like, girl, the lies are not necessary. Why? Like I said, she made a mad dash. So, when I heard, I was like, what? So I dropped my phone. I put my phone down and then I picked my phone back up. And then I, you know, I was like, I'm not running. I'm going to walk. This half was gone around the corner and some more. So anyway, I get around where she at and he is finishing talking to somebody. And then she basically was like, 
hey, are you are you Bobby Brown? Can I please have your picture? Da, da, da. I'm I'm walking up on her in this moment. So she turns around for somebody to get, you know, give the phone to. And she sees it's me and she was like, B, take a picture of me. I was like, okay. Took a picture. So I was like, I wonder if you'll let me take a picture with him. Because wait a minute. I really was fangirling out on the inside. That was so random. But <laughs> she know how I do. So I had it record. And I was like, girl, yeah, you know how I do. It's recording. So she flipped it around and then was recording us. So I have all of that. So I sent <laughs> the video recording to the group chat. My sister is on the literal bench, y'all. She was sitting on the bench. And I'm guessing she's going over some stuff like uh, having an intermission or whatever. She on the bench. This heifer that sat up here and video messaged me back and said, I'm talking about y'all about to break it. So I'm like, what are you doing? Where, where are you? What? Why? What is I'm talking about done went off. Now, keep in mind, my sister's two years younger than me. So I ain't know if my parents going to know who he was. Because my parents are, you know, in their... Hold on, my daddy is 72. So, yeah, my mom was late, late 60s or whatever. My daddy's early 70s. And, I, you know, I ain't know if they was going to know who he was. And then he had on, like, some little, you know... Uh, what they call them, not shades, but you know, I don't know why I, I literally had the thing in my mind. But anyway, it's the ones that you could tell like change when you're on the inside and all the other stuff, the, the, the lenses that he had and the glasses. He had them on, but you could still see that he was who he was. So he'd put his arm, he put his arm around me, but but child, he took my picture. But wait, I gotta back up and tell y'all how I went with my friend. So like I said, I come around the corner. She was like, "Oh my gosh, you buy brown? Can I take a picture with you?" Da, da, da. Why did this man proceed to do this? Body rolled some terrible and did this, and she was just like, "I was like, oh my god." <laughs> Y'all, I was screaming. I was so done. And he hugged her from the front like he knew her. I was like, when I tell y'all pearls were clutched, I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> I was like, wait, wait, girl, do you know him at this point? Because wait, <laughs> because I know, you know what I'm saying? We've been friends for 20 some years. I know, <coughs> excuse me. I know, you know, her love for, for New Edition and all that stuff or whatever, right? But I was just like, girl, what happened? Woo! It's a lot going on. <laughs> um, But yeah, he hugged her for the front. I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> no! I'm talking about the way they hugged, the, the embrace. I was like, wait. So, of course, I said, okay, I'm going to be messy. <laughs> Once we posted our stuff, I said, girl, I'm going to be messy. I'm just letting you know now. So, she was like, what you mean? I said, hold on. Give me a minute. I'm almost done. And so, she was just like. <laughs> so, I posted. And I said something to the effect of, it was the way you ran. Um, <laughs> it was the way that you ran for me. And then I was like. And why, and why did he hug you like he knew you? Like y'all been friends for forever or, or something. And then I put like the little eyes. <laughs> she has quite a few men who live for her. And they were jealous. One of them, she sent the picture directly to like a few of them. And one of the guys was like, so y'all's breasts are too close together. I was like, oh, he mad. I was screaming. That man was mad. But anyway, uh, amazing. Uh, he was very nice, uh, very pleasant. And I'm just glad that it wasn't a crazy situation. I'm glad that he wasn't like, oh, I'm in a rush. I'm trying to get up out of here. You know, I'm just glad he had no attitude because there are some people that I've heard of that people have met and they have a disgusting attitude, very nasty disposition. Taraji B. Henson is one of them. And I had no idea and somebody was like, yeah, she's very, like, rude. I was like, wait. So now, at this point, now I'm like, oh, 
well, apparently you haven't been getting what you feel like your just due is. It's because of how, of how nasty of a disposition you have towards the people who have helped you to get where you are. You know us. Because if we weren't watching these shows and movies and things, you wouldn't get none of this. But go off, though. But anyway, it was nice meeting him. Um, I heard that he has, like, family here or a family home or something here, like, in Alabama. So, um, he came and um, performed and, you know, just visited. You know, this is Montgomery, so, you know, it is what it is. So, yeah, that was... That was very interesting. <laughs> and I just can't believe I fangirled out. That was crazy. So, I'm going to let y'all into my business. Okay? And after I do that, I'm going to go ahead and let y'all go. So, <clears throat> y'all have heard me over the last few months, like, mention here and there about somebody that I was, you know, kind of dealing with and all this other stuff or whatever. So, that particular person... <laughs> I'm gonna give y'all a description um, of, of some some well, not really of of what they look like or whatever, but yeah. So this particular guy is someone who, you know, he he's very nice, um, attractive, attractive to me. Um, he has a child. He's the one I told y'all about. Has a young child. She's under the age of ten. And all of that. <clears throat> um, I was mainly going to visit him because for me, I'd rather get away. And you know, he was giving me gas money, and then he just stopped. And child, we ain't finna go into that. But it didn't really matter. Like I wasn't doing it for the gas money per se. But don't don't have me tearing my vehicle up, going up and down the road, and you know all of this. When I'm coming to see you and hang out with you, spend time with you, and you acting like you miss me, want me, love me, like literally, I told my friend, <clears throat> I told her, I said, I don't know why, but I feel like this man is going to either tell me that he loves me or ask me to be his girlfriend within six months of us getting to know one another and all this other stuff. And he told me that he loved me. And it's crazy because at that time, I was trying to basically dismiss him because I was just like, I don't even want to start catching feelings for real. Like, it already getting a little too real. Like, I was trying to cut that off because everything started happening with my brother. And I was supposed to go see him. <clears throat> and one thing, like, every update that, that came through, I was telling him about the update and I was like, you know what? I just, I ended up just saying to myself, let me just be done. Because ain't no telling when I'm going to see him no more. Because there's a trickle down effect. My brother is no longer the person taking care of my mother and my father. Even though my father is a perfectly capable person, my brother cooks their meals. And he like drives my daddy places like at the time my daddy needed cataract surgery on both of his eyes and all the other stuff <clears throat> so like whenever they go shopping they both go together and my brother is normally the one driving all this other stuff so when all that stuff happened i already knew i was like i'm gonna have to step in in some capacity and i was just gonna wait to see what they wanted me to do and you know, because it just started to look that way. And it ended up actually being exactly that. So my brother in the hospital, my daddy going to the hospital, spending most of the day at the hospital, all night at the hospital, coming home in the morning to spend time with my mama, tend to her, wash her up, whatever needed to be done in that moment. Um, I'm going to work. Y'all, when I tell y'all, I, I, I couldn't hardly function. I was just like, what in the? I'm going to work, but I would have to get up even earlier than I already was getting up. Cause at the time, this is when I was working like seven something in the morning until whatever. So I had to get up earlier to make sure I make her wake up so that I can give her her medicines and insulin shots and all this other stuff and pack food to sit on the bed for her because you know, she is paralyzed. She's not going to be able to get up and get her food. So I was packing stuff in bags and in 
Ziploc containers and all this other stuff because there was never any telling when my dad was going to be there. And since she's hooked up to a catheter, it's not like, you know, outside of number two and on herself, if that were to happen, she wouldn't, you know, have a need for somebody to be there to like take her and, you know, walk her to the bathroom or anything like they were doing initially before she went completely downhill. So I'm already sleep deprived. I'm stressed out because of my brother. My dad is stressed to the max because y'all, it, it was just too much. So anyway, too much was going on. So I done tried to cut this dude off. I straight, I straight up told him, I was like, you know what? I can't do this. I said, don't even worry about it. We, we just ain't even going to meet up no more because we had already set all this stuff up to meet this particular weekend or whenever we were going to meet. And uh, <clears throat> Yeah, at the time it was going to be a weekend because by this time I was working Mondays through Fridays. So we were going to meet up that weekend or whatever. Something happened with all the stuff with my brother. Like I said, trickle down effect. And I just got to the point. Every time I looked up, like it was like every hour on the hour, every hour and a half or something like that. Like, Less than two hours, every every one and a half hour or whatever, I'm being notified of a change. And my brother's situation is worsening. And I'm like, what in the world? Okay, so this is a sign. I don't need to have no dealings with him. And all focus got to be on my folks and that's it. Bye. Ain't nothing to talk about. That's what I'm saying to myself. I tried to dismiss him. This man was just like, yeah, no. Nah. Um, why would I go somewhere? I love you. You know I love you. And I was like, what and see like i was having feelings but i did not want to sit up there and look dumb like i did in my last relationship so yeah i was like yeah no and i kept on telling myself girl if you don't get out of here you don't like that man like that you you, you don't no so anyway fast forward so it's been a couple of months now since all of that transpired because we've been associating with one another since last year um <clears throat> I had to dismiss him like for real this time because I was just like, I ain't got time. I had to continuously have one-on-one -on -one conversations with this man and say, hey, I expect this, this, and this. And all I was asking for was consistency. That's literally all I was asking for. I was not asking the world. I didn't ask that man for a dime. I even told him, I said, you ain't even got to give me gas money no more. Like, none of that. So... You can't never try to make it seem like you're being used. None of this. I'm trying to show you I really care, but you don't want to be consistent. And then outside of not calling and texting and all this other stuff, he would get to a point where, okay, so the, the setup was since he has a small child, his daughter is very, you know, present in his life. This ain't no dead be dad. And he just went, yeah, I got a baby. Yeah, I got a child. No, nah, his, his child wanted to see him every single day and was FaceTiming him every single day and is smart and all of this. And I done been on FaceTime with her before and all of this, right? We had it set up where it was every other week was basically my week. And then the weeks that I wasn't there, obviously that was his daughter's week. But I already told him if anything were to pop up, I understand that I go to the back burner because your child is your child. I am not your wife. We are not dating. We ain't nothing. So if something was to pop off with your child, do what you got to do. Handle it. They ain't got to do with me. I would understand. But it would get to, it started getting to a point where we were like very consistently seeing one another. And at first that sufficed for me because even though he was lacking with the texting and the calling, I was seeing him often enough to where I was like, oh, okay, child, whatever. I'm, I'm spending the whole weekend with you. I'm in your face for several days. And they just so happened to be his off days and stuff too. Like, and then like when my child, then when my schedule changed to how it is now, like I'm spending three days with you versus two and all of this or whatever. And there were times that I would leave out the morning that I had to be at work an hour or two ahead of time just to make sure don't know wreck happened, ain't no accident, ain't no possibility of no weather foolishness. Because when I first started dealing with him, the first time I left from around where he was at or whatever, it was like really cold outside because you never know if a bridge going to be iced over, whatever. So I just would account for everything. So yeah, 
<clears throat> every time you look up, I would constantly reach out to him, be like, hey, you know, I know it's my week. This is going to be my weekend or my, you know, my time. So I'm like, hey, just making sure that, you know, we still on for, you know, this week. If he would say anything at all, he would be like, oh, I have to let you know when it gets closer to that date. So I'm usually reaching out that Monday. Let's say, because like when my schedule first changed, my Fridays were on Saturdays before this new schedule right, right now that's going on, right? So I would reach out like that Monday or that Tuesday, like, hey, you know, because I didn't want to be let down. I didn't want to get my hopes up. Let me know so I can plan something. I could just plan to do whatever I'm going to do, go plan to spend time with my folks, plan to play my video game, watch TV shows, movies, take myself out, do something. Y'all, he started being very inconsistent when it came to that too. And I would be, I would try not, it got to a point where I had to stop myself from even trying to get excited or being excited because I'm like, more than likely he gonna all of a sudden be like, well, we can't meet up this weekend, baby girl. And then, and I'm just like, but you couldn't say that earlier. And it's not like an emergency popped up or nothing like that. And then, so like the last few times that it never went through with, with us meeting up, <clears throat> it just wasn't happening. I was just like, yes, he ain't got time for this. So I was about to pull away again because I literally had a handful of conversations with him. Like, you need to text me more and let me know what's going on with you. Like, don't tell me you love me and want to be around me and you miss me and all this other crap. But then when we ain't in each other's presence, you're doing everything but reaching out. It don't take nothing to say, good morning, how you doing? How is your day? How's work going? Now, I don't want you to, what, what you doing me to death? That was something that he would do whenever he did text me. And I'm just like, I, I don't want that. Say something of substance. Let's talk about something. But it would get to a point where he'll sit up there and he would comfortably go seven, eight, nine days straight without saying, hey, buy nothing to me. So I'm at a place in my life where I'm like, I'm going to return the energy. Whatever you do, I'm going to do what you do. It's going to be monkey see, monkey do. I'm not setting it off on the left, right, and front. I'm not setting off on the left, right, front, and back. I'm not doing it. I'm Whatever you do, that's what I'm going to do. Because I'm tired of overextending myself, right? So I was like, I really would look at my phone and be like, really, this is what you're going to do? But you posting on Facebook. You posting on social media and all this other stuff. Talking about, oh, you, you, so, you, you so lonely and you so sad and you so this. I, I could have been there. We could have talked on the phone. All these things could have happened. But so, so he'll sit up there being his feelings for six, seven, eight, nine days. And then when he finally reach out, it's oh, I had such a rough week. Oh, work was so crazy. Oh, I wish I would have been able to talk about it. And I'm just like, but I'm here. I'm literally one of the few women in the world that will allow you to vent and not throw anything back in your face. As far as whatever is going on in your life or you feeling like you're having a vulnerable moment. All this other stuff that men, a lot of men claim that, oh, I can't, I can't show emotions. I can't do this. I can't do that. Yes, you can with the right woman. And I'm that type of woman. I'm not, I'm not going to say, oh, you weak or call you out your name because you are showing emotions. I would hope that you would do so, so that you don't end up showing them in a negative way and end up killing me, your child, your baby mom and everybody else. In your wake of foolishness because you've lost your mind because you felt like nobody was there to listen to you. So anyway, like y'all, 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 I need for y'all to understand. I'm literally, I'm literally woosawing, praying and said, Lord, okay, I really like this man. I'm more than like this man. I've already explained to him that this is how I operate. And it's like, he just kept getting worse and worse. Cause I'm just like, well, maybe we don't need to have no dealings with one another. No, no, I really like you. Da, 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 da. And it would just become longer and longer. And I'm just like, I feel like if you can go all that time without so much as a hello, how you doing? I miss you. None of that. I ain't got time for it. Like you, you on your phone all the time, looking at the stocks and all this other stuff. You're on your phone all the time. 
It takes nothing. It takes no time for you to text me. So anyway, a couple of months ago, minding my business, I was just like, you know what? And I said, I, I, I just can't. I ain't got time for this no more. So I reached out to him and I told him, I said, I basically was like, yeah, so um, I'm just going to, you know, exclude myself from this situation because you're not giving me what I know I deserve. So at first he was trying to act like he wanted to fight for it or whatever. And then I was just like, I know that I deserve more than what you give me. And he finally just caved in and he was like, yeah, you're right. But then what's hilarious is that I'll post something on social media and he'll get at his feelings. Like everything that I'll post, he'll be like, and I'm just like, now every time you look up, you so lonely. Oh, I wish somebody was in my bed. I already told y'all about the story about how I usually am in his bed when I am visiting him, going to sleep. We literally go in there, sleep, whatever. He'll be up looking at stocks, all this other stuff. Somebody shot through. I could have got hit if I had been sitting up, going to the bathroom in that moment, and he definitely could have gotten hit because he's normally sitting up, literally watching the stocks all the time. So it's like, sir, even after that happened, I was still like not phased, like, okay, they're going to patch up the bullet holes and I'm going to be over there another day or whatever. I never, never made it back over there ever since I told y'all about that. Child. So anyway, I had to tell him, like, I'm done. I ain't got time for it. You ain't got to worry about it. We ain't got to text no more, call nothing. So we're still associated with one another on social media. So he see everything I post and stay in his feelings bad. And I'm like, child, the next person ain't going to take that, that, that much longer to, to discuss. So that's why I'm not really saying much about that. But the gist of that is I'm done. I ain't got time for it. The Lord would have to reveal to me that he has now learned his lesson in order for the block to have been spent or whatever. If you want to say that, because we never really were even officially dating. It's just like the vibe, like if he actually would have followed through on what he was supposed to do, then everything will be amazing because there were times that I would find myself doing the most and I had to tell myself, you need to reel it in. Ain't nobody got time. So a <clears throat> couple of months went by, like maybe three, four months went by, minding my business. This man rolled up. He trying to talk to me and I'm like, I'm looking at him like, bro, I ain't got time for it. I ain't trying to talk to nobody. It don't never work. It's all right. He was like, I don't want to hear all that. I ain't like all these other dudes. I'm like, yeah, that's what y'all all say. I don't know why y'all love to say this. It's always going to end the same way from my experience. So he was like, you see what you see what, what I got on, right? And I was like, yeah. Child, he is um, he is someone who is like an upper level um, person of the court, I guess is what you could say. Let me just put it like that. He's like, you see what I got on, right? I was like, yeah. Child, so anyway, he tried to explain to me that with his situation, women tend to do what old boy was doing to me and not be consistent. He was like, I'm just trying to tell you, if you consistent with me, I'm going to be consistent with you. It ended up being a lie as usual. What pisses me off is that he would do some of the sweetest things without me even asking like with everything that had went on with my car when old girl hit my car he had started like fixing stuff on it and all that other stuff and had he actually followed through he would have actually you know gotten everything done like he was making it seem like he was gonna buy the stuff like i was just like he was like yeah you gotta do that don't even cost that much i can do this and he literally does stuff he has vehicles that he does all kinds of stuff to, and it's legit. People live for his vehicles. Like, he has nice vehicles and all of that. Anyway, um, but he's sitting up here like he one of them people, and, and I was just like, is this crazy? This has got to be crazy. This has got to be crazy because I've never met a man who actually is into trail rides and all the other stuff. And I've been telling y'all, and I think I told y'all, that I I want to start going to trail rides. I already like the trail ride music and all the other stuff. I already, you know, do the like line dances and stuff like that. So I always wanted to go. Apparently he goes all year round. All throughout 
the state of Alabama and other places, not just in Alabama. Like he really deep off in there. He was like, oh, we need to start going. And I mean, y'all, this man off rip was like, every time we'll talk about anything, this man would try to talk to me as if we were a couple. And I'm looking at him like, like I used to give, I would give him the eye. It was like a certain look I would give him like, he was like, don't look like that. He was like, we together now. I'm like, sir, I don't know what you talking about. Y'all, I met this man, daddy. And and I know a, a lot of people going to be like, girl, don't mean nothing. People people uh, introduce folks to they, they, they mama and all this all the time. The problem with that is, is that this man's mama passed away a couple of years ago. His sister passed away last year. And all he got left is his daddy. Now, he has other siblings, but... He literally, like, essentially is around his daddy all the time. And even when he was talking to me about all of this, I was just like, dang, I was able to verify all that. Like, y'all, I'm trying to tell y'all, I'm I'm trying to verify everything. I don't be having time. So, yeah, I verified all this stuff. This stuff is all true. So now he done pissed me off now because it's like he over here trying to set up dates. And then he going to fall off the, place, the face of the planet. How you go from texting me all literal day, whether you at work, I'm at work, we both at work, expecting me to call you because my schedule is so busy. Whenever I get a lunch break, because you want to hear my voice and us actually talking and telling me, hey, when you get off work, I, you know, I want to talk to you. You know, I want to hear your voice. We literally talking, conversation going well. I, I'm talking about vibes through the room i'm like if y'all saw the last video that i took of him my friend even was like dang y'all look happy it's crazy y'all it was like a light switch this man just all of a sudden no phone calls no to him and he's not married it ain't none of that i don't know if somebody gonna be like he probably married he's not married that's something he's not. Now, he might got a roster or something I don't know about. And I already asked him about that. And my thing is, I know people lie. So, I have no idea if he got a roster or the baby mama that came back around or whatever. Because he has a child, but she's a teenager. He ain't got but a couple more years until this, this child is grown. So, it is what it is. But, y'all, I told him, I was like, yeah, I ain't got time for it. Because cause I told him, I said, I'm going to basically pay attention to every single thing you say to me and hold you to it. He told me he was going to call me and I would wait. I waited. The last, the first time this happened and he told me, well, I'm going to call you. Da, da, da. I said, okay. Man didn't call it. I said, yep, I ain't got time for this. I said, I don't understand the problem, but I'm going to go ahead and go on about my business because how we go from talking all day, every day, you didn't even so much as say, Hey, good morning. Nothing. You ain't say nothing. So, nothing was said. I deleted everything. I did all of this. I did everything but block him from my literal phone number. This man tried to find me on social media. He did the most to try to reach out to me. Finally decided to, you know, be smart and actually text my phone number. And I'm looking at him like, why? He was like, I miss you. And I was like, but, but why though? Then did all of this. It was like, I really miss you. I don't understand why you weren't talking to me and blah, blah, blah. other crap. I explained it again. I said, it's all in the messages. I already explained this to you. That's why. This man that set it off on the left, right, front of the back, like he lived for me yet again, did all of this. And in the course of mm, like 24, 48 hours, same thing. I said, I ain't got time. <laughs> I don't have time for this. So I was like, you know what? I, all right. So he was like, hush, I'm working. I'll call you when I get up. I said, don't even worry about it. So then, not long after that, I texted him right back. I said, you know what? Matter of fact, I just want to know. I, I just would love to. I love for you to just answer this for me and just let me know what it is about me that y'all see. That y'all say, hey, let me play in her face. Like literally every man who looks in my direction. And I finally give them a chance they test my gangster every single time. They play in my face every single time. No matter how genuine they seem, they literally always play in my face. I just want to know what it is. He ain't saying nothing. But yeah, I'm finna block the number this time. Um, he don't know where I live. 
I mean, if he wanted to bad enough, he could find where my folks live. But as far as where I live currently, he ain't gonna find it. Um, he would have to ask my folks. And my folks are probably gonna be like, yeah, so you had somebody come through the house, come through, you know, to, to see what was going on with you. I hope you don't get them people my address. I, I'm not doing it, y'all. And with his situation, he lives, where he lives, I ain't here for it. And he has his own place and all this other stuff. I, I, I don't like the situation. I ain't got time for it. I, I'm not doing it. I'm not moving unless it makes sense. You're either going to live where I live or live somewhere that's better and still closer to Montgomery, Alabama, because I'm not moving far away from my folks no more. I already made that mistake and missed out on a lot of stuff that were very important things in my life because I did them for my ex. I ain't doing it no more. So at this point, I'm just like, child, I ain't got time for it. Listen, my thing is, at this point, nobody is going to fit what I deem to be the man of my dreams or a man that I would desire. Um, I want a man that's into what I'm into eating and, and all that stuff when I do do right. Um, so alkaline lifestyle, fruititarian, and all that other stuff or something closely related to that. Or even if you ain't doing all that, eat healthy for the majority of the time. Somebody that's motivated and that would help to motivate me so I can work out like I need to more regularly, a lot regularly, um, a lot more regular. You try y'all know, I don't know what I'm saying at this moment, but yeah, cause I'm, I done had a flashback. Um, somebody that's, you know, into something that's higher than themselves when it comes to, you know, whether it's Christianity Ushon, all of that good stuff, you know, at least to be able to talk about it. You ain't got to be all about it, but to at least have some knowledge of it because it is a part of our heritage. And when I say our, the person in my dream is going to be black, African, something. They're going to look like me. If, if this was going to be somebody that, that's going to be with me, I, I, they going to be. They going to look like my daddy, meaning they going to be black. So, you know what I'm saying? So when it comes to that, you know, the spirituality got to be the not no atheist, none of that foolishness or whatever. The spirituality, the Christianity, something. It's going to have to be something that's there so we can pray, meditate, all that other good stuff. Um, um, well wishing, all that good stuff. Um, you got to be into what I'm into or be here for it in a sense where you ain't got no issue with it. Something, you know what I'm saying? It, to me, I don't ask for a lot. I feel like I don't want a lot in a man. But I can't even get the bare minimum. And that's why I just be like, I don't understand what it is that's that's wrong with me. That people just play in my face. And even with the standards that I try to have now, these people still be trying me. And I just be like, yep, let me go on. Now, I've been asked... Is it better for us women to date one at a time exclusively or date all of them? And now I'm like, maybe I was doing it wrong this whole time. If I'm going to date, maybe I need to date a whole bunch of people at the same time. And, you know, for anybody that's slow, <clears throat> dating does not necessarily mean you're screwing anybody or everybody that you are going out with. <coughs> Sorry. This air is blowing in here. It finally just cut off. Um, don't want y'all to think I have vid of the co. So, I just, I already know. Like, when it comes to, like, like if I work, like, I still have a couple of eggs left. What if the person that I'm dealing with, you know, want kids? I want them to understand that I want a doula. I want to have this baby at the house. I want this person to be on board with that. Would they be on board with that? And the fact that maybe I don't want their, you know, the baby stuff in the system. Cause there's a way to work around all of that. And it, like, it's a whole, it's a whole lot when it comes to me, like you would have to be handcrafted for me. I wish there was a build a man workshop. So I wouldn't have to explain this. Like either you're going to be him or you ain't. Cause I, it, it's too much. And this is just all ifs because I don't even know if I would ever even be able to conceive a child. I'm on my last few eggs. So I'm just saying. Anyway, it's just a lot and, and, and I just ain't here for it. So I'm just going to go back to not 
caring about nobody at all. None of these men. Forget them. I'm tired of my spirit. I focus on my job. Doing the stuff I need to do. Because these people love trying to try me. Anyway, hopefully y'all are having an amazing day. And I will bug y'all later. Bye.